In my previous video, where I made my own Bluetooth speaker, I used this crossover thing to separate the high frequency and low frequency signals coming out to the speakers. The reason why we do this is because to achieve a better sounding sound system, one speaker driver is usually not enough. You see, we can't expect to use a speaker driver that gives good sound on frequencies from 20Hz to 20kHz. Of course, there are these full range drivers that supposedly able to do that and sound pretty good. But you usually have to pay arms and legs for that. The solution is to split the sound frequency into some range of frequencies and use some cheaper frequency specialist driver for each range of frequency. There are a lot of ways to do this. A two-way system, for example, splits the audio signal to low bass frequency of below about 150Hz and up above that. The low things, usually the beats, drums, and etc. goes to the subwoofer, a kind of driver that specializes in the low frequency range, and the rest of the signal goes to the ordinary driver. A three-way system, however, splits the audio into three range of frequencies, the low range for the subwoofer, the middle range for the middle range driver, and the high-pitched stuff for the driver we call tweeter. But that's enough of it. The point of this video is to give you an idea of what happened in the crossover circuit. I mean, think of this for a second. How on earth can we split frequencies like what these crossover things did? I mean, you don't use a knife, surely, but then how? For this kind of application, we need a filtering circuit. A circuit that receives an AC input and allowing some frequency to pass the output and some frequency we choose to just gone. If this filtering circuit only lets the low frequency to pass, then we call it a low pass filter. But if it only allows the high frequencies to pass, as the definition goes, we call it a high pass filter. Now, this is best demonstrated with real thing. So this is a sound of a music with no filter on. And this is what it sounds like with a high pass filter. This is how it sounds with a low pass filter on. So you get the idea. Now how does this filtering circuit work? There are quite some variety of filter circuits, but in this video I'll show you what I think is the simplest kind, the resistor capacitor filter, famous with the name RC filter. I'm gonna start with the low pass filter. In order to let the low frequencies to pass, you're going to use the capacitor and the resistor as shown. Why? Here's what happened. When the AC voltage starts oscillating at some frequency, the capacitor will charge up slowly following the input voltage. Why slowly? Because the resistor is kinda holding the current that goes into the capacitor, resulting the capacitor to charge slowly. Now if the AC frequency is low, the circuit will have enough of its time to charge the capacitor, so that the voltage across the capacitor will follow the voltage of the input. If the AC frequency is really fast, however, the circuit won't have enough time to charge the capacitor following the original input. Therefore, the voltage across the capacitor won't be as high as it is on the input, and therefore we have our filter. The higher the frequency gets, the harder it is for the capacitor to follow the original input. And if now we amplify the signal on the output, we have our original signal filtered on the output. Now to calculate the cutoff frequency, that is the frequency where the capacitor starts the big filtering, we use this equation. About how we get this equation is beyond the scope of this video, for now let's just use the equation. For example, we want to make a low pass filter for our sub bass frequency for our subwoofer. So the subwoofer only receives the low frequency below 160 Hz. First we need to choose the value of our filter's resistor. Because it's easier this way than to choose our capacitor than calculate our resistor value. Let's say I choose a 100 ohms resistor. From the equation, we get the capacitor value of 9.953 microfarad. I'm gonna round it up to 10 microfarad. Now, Let's see how the filtered output compares to the input on the capacitor at different frequencies. At 5 Hz, the output looks like the same as the input. We go up until 100 Hz, there's not much change either, but there is a noticeable phase shift. We're not going to get to that now since that requires some other specific details. Now, 160 Hz and up, the cutoff frequency we've set earlier, 
we can see that the output voltage decays significantly low. The voltage gets lower as the frequency goes up. At 2 kHz, we can see that now the output is really low. Awesome! And now, to represent the experiment we've done earlier with the graph, we use this thing called a Bode plot, named after this guy, Hendrik Wade Bode. He was an American researcher, engineer, inventor, and other kind of stuff. All in all, he's cool. And we're not going to talk about this guy in this video. So, the Bode plot of an ideal looking low pass filter looks like this. Everything goes smoothly until boom, we reach the cutoff frequency, and now everything is gone. However, this is impossible to achieve as it's unrealistic and too ideal. Hence, I'm going to show you how a more realistic version looks like. Here it is. As you see, everything seems okay until we meet the cutoff frequency. We see that now, the output amplitude gets reduced significantly. Now, we know about the low pass stuff. What about the high pass filter? An RC high pass filter looks exactly like a low pass filter, except for that the position of the resistor and capacitor is switched. Now, we can use a direct analysis of the circuit like we did earlier with a low pass filter, so we're going to do that. The reactance of a capacitor is given by this equation. Now, what's this reactance thing? To put it simply, the reactance of the capacitor is how much the capacitor will oppose the changing voltage in the circuit, because capacitors are cool. So, the higher the frequency, the lower the reactance. Henceforth, the more the capacitor acts as a conductor. The lower the frequency on the other hand, the more the reactance be, and the capacitor acts somewhat like a bigger resistor. It's almost as if we have a voltage divider with one fixed value resistor, and the other one is a variable resistor that changes its resistance in first to its input frequency. So you can see that high frequency can pass through the output, and the low ones can't. And this is our high pass filter. The body plot for a high pass filter looks exactly the same as the low ones for the low pass filter, except for that it's flipped around. The high frequencies higher than the cutoff frequency look pretty much horizontal on the on the plot. As the signal approaches the cutoff frequency, it starts to decrease its amplitude. And below the cutoff frequency, the amplitude of the signal is going down significantly lower. The equation for the cutoff frequency of a high pass filter is the same as the low pass. That is, the frequency is inversely proportional to the resistance of the resistor times the capacitance times 2 pi. And now you know about passive filters. But here's the bad news. Although you can do this, this is not really how a crossover circuit works. You see, you can do this for the input to your amplifier, but not for the output. Because there will be a lot of power loss at the resistor. And if you use it to filter the output, you'll just end up burning your quarter watt resistors. So to handle this, we are not using this kind of circuit for our crossovers. Instead, we use this magic inductor thing that has like almost no power loss. But I think you kinda get the idea of filters. And since filters with inductors are a little harder to explain, and if we are talking like LC filter and high order filters that I haven't yet explained what those are, the mathematical stuff will get plenty more delightful and all I can say right now is those stuff are subject for another video for now. Those were the concepts you need to know first about filters. You can actually use the circuits together and experiment with the output, but since it'll be more complex to calculate, you can just use circuit simulation softwares like LTSPICE. Now, I know that for people that's just learning this now, your minds are now a little bamboozled, especially when I went talking about the reactance stuff. But do mind that it is always a little confusing at first. But once you go through it again, read some more explanations online, try it out yourself and etc, you'll understand it there. Well, that's all for this video. I hope you get a little light of what all the filter circuits are about, and I'll see you in the next video.